Oh, we're live. <laughs> yes, we are. All right. This is a regular scheduled finance committee meeting. It is Monday, November 20th at 5.30. And committee members present. I'm the chair Tremble. We have Council Dean, Council Fournier, Council Leonard, Council Yakabaga, and we also have Council Haas and Council Fish in attendance. As well as this is what's your actual title in the finance deputy finance deputy director. finance director Tory, and we will start out with a little background and overview of the role of the finance committee. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm going to read this to make sure that I don't miss any of the details. There's quite a lot here, so bear with me. Um, at the beginning of each council year, the staff assigned to council committees distribute an overview of the. Uh, committee's responsibilities, as well as provide copies of certain policies. Those are in your packet um, at the very back um, that the committee may find useful in the near term to conduct its business. Finance Director David Little is the staff member assigned to the Finance Committee and will work with the city manager, committee members, and chair to identify goals and areas of focus for the coming year. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Finance Director Little by phone or email uh, provided in your packet. So uh, under general overview, the Finance Committee has oversight of a majority of the city's financial decisions. The specific duties and responsibilities of the committee are outlined in Chapter 9, Article 1, Section 9-8C of the City Code. A copy of that is also included in your um, packet, overview packet. Uh, the committee is comprised of five city council members. The committee meetings are held on the first and third Monday of each month. The start time varies um, depending on the Economic Development Committee, which also meets on the same night, as well as the Government Ops and Infrastructure Committees on alternating Mondays. Uh, generally, the committee meetings begin at 5.15 or a little later. Each committee agenda contains three types of actions. They are consent, bids, and purchasing, and other. And I think we have one of each of those tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the consent agenda uh, items are considered routine in nature. Most are generated by either the finance, treasury, or legal departments. Workout agreements are executed by the tax collector as a payment plan for outstanding taxes. Only those agreements for matured tax liens would require committee approval. Um, for write-off of outstanding tax accounts, the tax collector and the finance director may adjust or write off balances of up to $25 if considered uncollectible or in the best interest of the city. Amounts more than $25 will require committee approval. From time to time, the committee may be asked to write off accounts that were assess assessed in error if the assessments are beyond the time limits for which the assessor can grant an abatement. Uh, recommending council orders to the full council for appropriation of funds from both internal, which are fund balance accounts, and external grant agency sources. The committee reviews reports for bids awarded by the staff, emergency purchases more than $25,000, and purchases of used equipment or vehicles. Typically, new vehicles would be included in the bids and purchasing section. Uh, however, due to current supply chain and inventory issues, uh, staff is purchasing available vehicles as they are found and will appear on the consent agenda for retroactive approval. Um, any, agenda, uh, any committee member or members may request to have an item removed from the consent agenda if there's a desire for additional discussion on those items. Uh, depending on the scope or nature of the items identified above, the finance director may place it um, on the agenda as a separate item. Um, those would be workout agreements or write-off requests or recommendation to council orders. Um, under bids and purchasing, all items for action under that category are prepared and or reviewed by the finance department. Any questions regarding the process, outcome, or in general in this area should be forwarded to finance uh, director Little. The city of Bangor has adopted extensive purchasing rules and regulations, a copy of which we can provide to you. Um, all goods and services in excess of $25,000 uh, are subject to the bid process and are presented in summary form as an update of actions taken by staff or with staff, staff recommendation of, uh, for committee action for either passage or referral to for full council if it exceeds the value of $250,000. Uh, 
Um, the last item are other items. The committee is responsible for the final review of the issuance of short and long-term borrowings. While the authorization to borrow is approved by the council as a whole, upon issuance, the committee will take final action by adopting a resolution approving the pricing in terms of issue. <laughs> review and adoption of operating policies and procedures for the following departments are city council, city manager, finance, and that includes audit, information services or IT, central services, which is printing, um, the assessing department, legal, and other non-operating divisions. For taxpayers in financial distress, state law allows municipal officers to abate taxes for those individuals unable to contribute to the public charge. Based on financial information provided by an individual to the tax collector, the public health and community services department, and the finance director, they will make a determination of eligibility based on the city's policy, um, a copy of which is attached in this packet. All recommendations for abatement require committee approval. The individuals that are denied by the finance director may request a hearing with this committee um, who will make the final determination. Um, approximately each quarter, the assessing department will review current conditions regarding the city's tax base. This involves reviewing the annual state municipal valuation report, the sales ratio analysis, change in assumptions used for assessment, and other topics affecting property values. Any questions regarding this process, the outcome, or just in general within this area should be directed to Phil Drew, the city assessor. Um, included in this packet are copies of, the cer of certain policies that the committee may find useful. Um, there's the abatement pro uh, policy, which is in review right now um, with expected recommended changes in the next few months. Uh, properties with mature tax or lien, sewer liens, debt policy and fund balance policy. And those are all the way at the back, the last, um, I think 20 something, 30 something pages. Um, in, in conclusion, while the above summary doesn't cover all the items that will come out before the committee, it, it's a brief overview of the more common items that you'll see. Should you have any questions regarding this overview or any specific agenda item prior to a scheduled meeting, please reach out to Director Little and his phone and email information is also included. You'll get to know him very well. I've got a quick question. It might be, it might be for Debbie. <laughs> okay. On the review of the abatement policy, isn't that pretty much governed by state law, the abatement policy? Do we have any flexibility? In you really don't have much flexibility. Um, abatements, property tax abatements, are defined in state statute and we have adopted what's referred to as a modified GA approach to it. Um, but we do want to relook at that. So typically the policy you've adopted says, you know, depending on which criteria is met, you know, are the reasonable and necessary household expenses greater than um, their the household income? Um, do they meet the definition? So those are our standards. We can change, tweak yeah. those a little bit if we yeah. want to. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on the presentation? Uh, so the uh, the write-offs of the tax accounts, mm -hmm. $25? Yeah, that's all we can do at staff level. Can we increase that? Can we put a zero in there? <laughs> or two zeros? $250, $2,500? I think that was twenty five hundred. It's a little high. That's it. It, it might be. Yeah. So I'm going to be two fifty. Twenty five to two fifty. So we can bring that back for discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I thought that was a lot. I mean, we I changed those other levels this year on the bids. And that's mm -hmm. reasonable. Yeah. 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 Okay. And the two other things that I had mentioned to you yeah. offline, <clears throat> uh, just what comes to this committee is the annual audit. To me, that should be written in yes. there somewhere, and then. Right. Not monthly, but quarterly. quarterly financials. I will settle for quarterly. <laughs> quarterly. Yes. Yes. But if that could be written in there. Yeah. Was well, it the finance committee that actually engages the auditor? Do we, yes. Yeah. Okay. You are viewed as the audit committee. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay. No? Great. Thanks. We, so, we're off to the first item. Is that the, the van? Yes. Oh, the consent agenda. Actually.
Yes, and we have two vehicles um, on the consent agenda. Um, one is for the community connector and one is for the airport. Uh, the first one for community connector, um, the community connector is a fixed route public transportation provider and is required to provide ADA paratransit services to qualifying individuals who are unable to have or have um, limited ability to use a fixed uh, route option. Um, in 2018, the Community Connector began providing these services, and since that time, the city has purchased six ADA paratransit minivans. Um, unfortunately, the vans in service are not sufficient to meet the ongoing demand for the service, so an additional van is being rented currently from the Fleet Maintenance Department or from Mobility Works um, when it's needed. Um, at the last triennial review by the um, Federal Transit Administration, the vehicle shortfall was identified um, and we were informed that we are close to being out of compliance. Um, regulations require properly planning service, allocating resources and managing operations in order to meet 100% of expected demand. Um, Mobility Works in Herman has a used 2019 Dodge Grand Caravan, um, which would meet our accessibility needs for the cost of $53,000. Uh, the vehicle has 44,000 miles on it, and the Braun warranty uh, on the conversion would still be in effect. The warranty covers um, the city. It does transfer to the city. It expires uh, next September or when the van hits 80,000 miles, whichever comes first. Um, based on our current ridership demands, the staff's recommendation is to purchase the minivan um, to be used for the ADA paratransit services. Uh, the funding for the minivan will come from reprogramming $53,000 of our FY 2021 bus and bus facilities formula apportionment, which was initially programmed uh, for a bus barn roof replacement. Um, the federal funding is an 80-20 match. The local share um, was part of the FY 23 budget. So we are... And I would just point out that 20% local share is still not all in the Bangor taxpayer. We pay a, it falls to the bus system and we pay a percentage of that. What are we at? About 40% of it? 60, right. 60. Okay, 60. We pay 61% of the 20%. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The local share is broken down at the bottom. Okay. So you can see the community. You want a motion on the whole well, consent? We'll do the whole agenda. consent agenda. Yeah. All right. Um, the, the next item is a truck for the airport. Uh, the airport was budgeted to purchase one airfield maintenance regular cab pickup truck. The purchase amount for the new 2024 GMC Sierra vehicle um, is $55,895. The purchase will be funded through the FY24 capital budget. Um, the old vehicle um, that they are using now will be sold through auction. A majority of the local vendors uh, have indicated that they will not participate in an RFP process uh, due to the significant wait times for ordered vehicles and the inability to hold the prices. So the staff uh, did reach out to vendors to see if any vehicles on their lot met our specifications. Um, and they uh, contacted five dealerships. Barty was the one that had the vehicle that they needed. Um, uh, once inventory and supply return to pre-pandemic levels, the RFP process will go back into effect. Um, so the airport staff request rec retroactive approval to purchase the 2024 GNC Sierra. So move the consent agenda. Second. Second, if there's no objection, the consent agenda has approval. And then on to the bids and purchasing. Thank you. Uh, there's three items on bids and purchasing. The first one is for the community connector. Um, the community connector has been planning to move away from flag stop, a flag stop bus system to a fixed route stop system. Um, this was a recommendation from a study we had in 2019 to improve service and consistency. Uh, developing designated bus stops will better connect Bangor's transit services to neighborhoods and communities served by the community connector. Establishing dedicated stops will make the rider experience safer, more convenient and predictable, um, especially when real-time information will be available. With the implementation of technology, <coughs> fixed bus stops will help achieve efficiencies and improvements in our service. It will also allow passengers to use an app to track the buses, 
show locations of bus stops, times, and more. Um, in FY20, the Community Connector applied for and was awarded a bus and bus facilities discretionary grant, which is going to fund this project. Uh, the grant is an 80-20 split. A request for a quote was sent to five uh, contractors to install the bus stop signs at the approximately 330 fixed stop locations. There were only two uh, replies. One was from Eastwood Contractors Incorporated of Brewer at $475 per sign. And one was from Centerline Utility Services of Bangor at $185 per sign. Uh, Centerline can begin the project in December and has a target completion date of February 28, 2024. Um, the project includes providing breakaway poles, hardware, permitting, GPS coordinates, and GIS integration. Uh, Centerline will also add no smoking signs at bus shelters, change out old bus stop signs as needed, and is willing to stay on as our contractor for signage replacement work um, after the initial installation. Uh, the bus stop signs themselves will be provided by the community connector. So staff recommends moving forward with the low bidder, um, which is Central Line Utility Services at $180 per sign for an estimated project total of $61,050. Any questions on this item? Council Yeah, I, I do want to make a motion to approve this, but I do want to make a comment really quick. Um, uh, so this has been in the works for uh, a while. And the, the reason I'm, I'm saying this right now, just because there's going to be naturally some confusion as we're transitioning over from a uh, flag stop to actual um, uh, stops for particular areas of town. Um, this is going to be much more efficient for our drivers. It's going to be much more efficient for the routes. And it's going to allow Bangor to be a much more walkable city and allow people that have not as close of access to their own personal vehicles, the ability to travel to more convenient stops throughout the city and also to uh, places beyond Bangor, like the University of Maine or no. Um, one thing I do want to bring up uh, and, and just, I, I know we I know we have a general answer for this, but I, I just wanna make sure that we ask this question uh, right now is uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, criticisms I hear from from people who are um, part of the ADA, like, like with people with disabilities, is uh, there's going to be issues for them getting to these actual uh, stops in some areas. And so I just want to talk about really quickly the uh, the resources that the city has to address the needs of uh, those who might have mobility issues to get to these stops. Because I, th I think that is uh, something that has a little bit of uh, of uh, a confusion around certain people that have been normally very used to flagging stops, but I wanna make sure that we discuss there are op options for those people who struggle with uh, potentially getting to these uh, stops that we're going to allocate throughout the city. Yeah, absolutely. Courtney O'Donnell, Assistant City Manager. I received the Community Connector with Bus Superintendent Lori Lynn Scott. Um, as Councilor Leonard pointed out, this uh, has been in the works for a while, and a lot of work went into determining where stops should go. So everything from the distance between the stops to um, usage um, of the different areas and, and things of that nature all went into developing where we believe that these bus stops should be. But um, it's important to note that there will be a six-month transition period where folks can still flag down the bus um, while being educated about where the bus stops are. And they're not, we're starting with the signage simply because, and without going full um, into the infrastructure piece. So that way, if a bus stop does need to be adjusted to meet a need, uh, for example, we can do that. Now, folks that um, have... Um, a, a disability, let's say, that prevents them from being able to reach that bus stop um, are encouraged to reach out um, and apply for ADA paratransit service, which is a supplementary service to the fixed route um, and is meant for those that are unable to use the fixed stop system um, um, easily. So um, there's a process for that. It does cost money the same way the regular bus does, um, but it is a door-to-door -door service. Um, and so that is always an option for folks that are unable to get to um, a bus stop. But again, they're not set in stone. We'll continue to gather feedback about where they are and make adjustments as needed. Hopefully that answers your question. No, thank you so much for that. And uh, that, that's all I really wanted to add, unless any other councilors wanted to add uh, anything else to that topic. That's a point. I was just going to second the motion. 
Um, I like that you guys, you're going to accommodate those with disability. And my question is, are you going to advertise for this service that people can you know, fill out this application? How would people know that this is available? Um, that's a good question. I think most um, like doctors, providers, mm -hmm. Pinkless, everybody knows that it's, that it's there. Um, people who call and have um, issues with the fixed mm -hmm. stop and ask questions mm -hmm. will be redirected to that process. Um, we also, when we post notice about bus service, whether or not they're going to operate on a holiday or not, mm -hmm. we always include ADA paratransit service. Um, so I'd like to think that um, most folks who need the service naturally find their way there. Um, but certainly, um, you know, we're open to suggestions of how we can ensure that our residents are aware that the service exists. Um, I will say that um, I think the words out there, um, as um, uh, Deputy Finance Director pointed out, our ridership has increased dramatically. The demand for ADA paratransit is, I mean, it's just skyrocketed. Um, and, you know, I guess we, we didn't originally anticipate buying this many vans this quickly, but when you you are obligated to um, to provide the service. Um, and so we have to we have to scale up to meet that need. Okay. Just a quick quick follow up to your last comment and a question to follow up to this one. You mentioned how the ADA ridership is way up. I mean, if you mm -hmm. just look at the bus ridership, it's not a moneymaker. I'm guessing the ADA ridership is a really, really not a moneymaker. I mean, we must lose a lot of money in the ADA by so um I would assume so. I think it's like three dollars right a ride. Yeah. Um, to the regular bus. Um. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's cheaper to ride the regular bus, but I have. No, I mean, the, I mean the cost to the, the cost to the bus oh. must be a lot more for the ADA. Yeah, system. it's definitely a supplemented right. service. So, and are we on that section? We didn't. We recently mm -hmm. avoid the technology bid. I mean, yeah. that'll help with the communication mm -hmm. stuff. So, when does that get implemented? Next year. Early in the year? Um, no, it'll be, it's a it's a pretty big process. Yeah. Equipment has to be installed across all the buses and platforms and everything else. Um, however, having these uh, stops in place with the signage and the GPS coordinates and things um, integrated into the system will hopefully streamline that process. Great. Thank but, any other questions on this item, Councilor Dean? How many stops will there be? Uh, over 330. Yes. Yeah. Explain how many people. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that is important. So as Councilor Trumbull pointed out, we are only one uh, community that pays into the system for the local share. Um, so we get a lot of grant funding and there's always a, a local share that's required to match it. Um, and Bangor has the most stops, the most routes and things. So we have 61%, but also Hamden, VZ, Orono, Old Town, and the University of Maine all pay into the system. All right, thank you. That's a movie Brewer. Oh, and Brewer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a big <laughs> one. Thank you. Almost got in trouble there. <laughs> All right, let's doubt this a vote. It's approved. Thank you. Next item is almost, almost ready for pool season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't wish. Um, yes, this is for uh, parks and recreation uh, pool resurfacing. The Parks and Recreation Department operates two municipal swimming pools during each summer season. The Beth Panko Aquatic Center is located on 13th Street and the Dakin Pool is located at the end of Pine Street off Stillwater Avenue. Each pool needs resurfacing of the walls and the pool floor surface. The Dakin Pool was last resurfaced in the late 1990s and the Panko Pool has not been done since its opening in 2004. Uh, funding to resurface the two pools is included in the FY24 budget in the amount of $248,000. Uh, staff solicited proposals to resurface each pool. Uh, the Dakin pool request included the option to assess the deck and the pool um, to make any other improvements uh, or repairs. We received two proposals for the resurfacing project at Dakin. Um, one was from affordable gunite pools of Hudson, New Hampshire. Um, they submitted a proposal for $145,517, and USA Construction of Cummings, Georgia, submitted a proposal for $104,223. Um, they received one proposal from Affordable Gunite Pools for resurfacing at Panko. Um, they submitted a proposal for $499,525. Um, Affordable Gun, I also offered a 3% discount if we contracted with them for both pool projects. 
Um, Affordable Gunna included in their proposal an option to choose a variety of different plaster types and colors. They've been to Bangor and are familiar with our facilities. Um, they've also recently completed a similar project at the Laura Hoyt Pool in Hamden. Um, our staff followed up with them and they were very satisfied with the work Affordable Gunite had done and would recommend them. The USA Construction um, Company did not have any projects to compare to and um, included conditions in their warranty that we cannot be, uh, we can't meet here in Maine in the climate, um, specifically keeping the pool filtered and circulating for 12 months. Um, Affordable Gunite did not um, have specified such conditions. So the staff is recommending and seeking approval um, to contract with affordable gunite pools for the resurfacing of Dakin Pool in the amount of $145,517. Uh, staff is further recommending uh, postponing the resurfacing at Panko um, and including a funding request as part of the FY25 budget for that project. Uh, postponing will not affect opening and operations for the summer of 2024. Questions in this item? Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Second. 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 Okay. Second. Second. Without a doubt, this has approval. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was the, uh, yeah. the last oh, item. The list. Yep. The portable column list for the airport. Um, an RFP for portable column lifts uh, resulted in four bids ranging from $54,444 to $68,170. The two lowest bidders were disqualified for not meeting uh, the requested specifications, uh, particularly regarding the large wheel adapters needed to accommodate the equipment, um, work done by the Airfield Maintenance Division. Uh, Power Wash Sales LLC was the lowest uh, responsive bidder at $62,995 which is under the approved FY24 budgeted amount. Um, staff recommends um, approval of this purchase. Any questions on this item? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Move and second. Without objection, this item has approval. Thank you. Property acquisition. Item four? Yeah. Um, City staff from Treasury, Code Enforcement, Community and Economic Development in the Legal Department um, have had regular meetings with the city manager to discuss property and uh, with matured tax and or utility liens. During these meetings, um, a review is conducted of these properties and they are categorized um, as to priority and whether the current owner is under a valid workout agreement or has been making a determined effort to pay the outstanding charges. Uh, due to the COVID pandemic, staff had proposed, uh, post postponed moving forward on these types of uh, uh, properties over the past few years. But as we're coming out of COVID, we're now recommending that the city um, move forward and take possession of uh, 45 Allen Street and 240 uh, Grove Street. The properties are vacant and have either been placarded and have or have uh, code violations that the owners have failed to resolve. The city treasury office has also had no ongoing or recent contact from the owners as to paying the outstanding tax or utility charges. A notice was placed in three consecutive weekend editions of the Bangor Daily News and a notice was placed on the property uh, stating that anyone with an ownership interest in these properties should contact the city treasury department if they wish to redeem the property and to date no one uh, no contact has been made the properties have a total amount due to the city of approximately twenty six thousand two hundred dollars uh, once acquired the staff will secure and insure the properties and conduct a full in, um, inspection uh, to determine the property's condition and potential use um, as well as follow the required procedure for any personal property uh, that's left behind. With your approval, council orders um, to take possession will be presented at the next full council meeting. I think there'll be a lot of support for this. I just would like, I'm in favor of this. It'd be helpful. I know you didn't put this together. There's any more information. One, I think if it could be broken down by property, 
you know, what's owed on the, each property, who owns the property, when's the last time they actually made a payment to the city, and what the assessed value is. Those would be helpful to me, but I, I don't have a problem with taking these. But any other questions or counsel for you? I was just going to echo that. And if uh, there's been a conversation with code during any of this, some of the placard, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. Yes. But but since I was at the meeting, <laughs> Debbie Lurie, city manager. Um, so um, it was a joint effort between the treasurer's office and code to look at what do we have for properties that have matured liens on them, and then also in consultation with code, who do, you know, verifying are you on a vac vacant or placarded property list. Um, also talking to code about. Are these particular properties uh, properties that we get a lot of complaints from neighbors about? So virtually both of these are on our placarded list. I get that. I yep. just didn't know if there was any yep. conversation with code during any of this. Yep, it process. is. And then once we take possession of them, then we can gain entry. So we right. can't actually assess any of the property until we, we take possession. I didn't know any of the property owners. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was my question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other questions or is a motion to make a motion? Second. Is this, is this like uh, is this like when we uh, demolish a property? Is there a process we have to move a process? Or do you just go ahead and we, yeah. how do we take the possession? We've possession? completed the process. process. So we've yeah. completed all of the notification process that's required under state statute, which is why we advertise for three consecutive weekends and we have a 90 day redemption period. That 90 days has passed, the notices have been posted, we've heard nothing. Um, so you're good. Yeah. So we had a mo motion and who is a second? Yes. Okay, we have an objection this has approval. Thank you. Um, okay, <laughs> the next thing on the um, agenda is uh, general relief carry forward. Yep. So for the last two fiscal years, uh, the state of Maine has provided one-time funding um, to all municipalities on a proportionate basis based on the amount of general assistance claims that you have. And as we were touring up uh, the fiscal year 23, and I don't know if you saw the recent article about 8.5 million came out for general assistance. Virtually all of that is going to Portland. That's in 24. 24, the city of Bangor is going to receive $71,000. But until the year end is over and you barely know what your GA claims are, you don't really know if you have any excess or not. So the additional funding that the city mm -hmm. received in fiscal year 23 was $412,000. Um, and we did not exceed our local budgeted share. Um, but we also had an issue where um, HUD recently made a determination that a particular expenditure that we made earlier this year related to um, furnishings for individuals moving into housing is not eligible for federal funding. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use 50,000 of the 412 to substitute for that. So we actually have $362,000 of additional money. Um, the request is, is that we carry that forward for future years to help mitigate future year tax rate impacts. Uh, what we know, and I'm going to say this because um, last week at the chamber event, I know Councillor Fish heard a couple of people saying, well, we don't have general assistance. We don't have the budget for it. Well, that's not how general assistance works. General assistance is an entitlement program that every municipality in the state of Maine must offer to an individual who is in need. If the individual meets the eligibility requirements as defined by the state of Maine, they must be granted general assistance. It isn't whether or not you have the budget. It is whether or not the individual meets the um, eligibility requirements. And if they do, regardless of what you have budgeted, the general assistance must be provided. We're going to actually do a deeper dive at our October, uh, October 4th. Good gracious. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm like back to the future here. <laughs> At our first uh, December DevOps <laughs> meeting, um, we're going to actually run through the whole general assistance program um, just so that, because clearly there is a misunderstanding about what general assistance is. 
Um, and we want to help clarify that. But what this will allow us to do is mitigate the impact on any potential increases in general assistance to our taxpayers. The city has a 30% required local share. Um, so if let's say general assistance based on what we're seeing goes up $100,000 or $200,000, we'd have to raise 30 or $60,000 more from the taxpayer. By putting this money, this one-time money aside, we're able to mitigate the impact to our taxpayers in the future. Any questions? Make a motion. Sure. Second. And a second. Without objection, by the approval. Okay. City Hall update on the renovation. Courtney O'Donnell again. Um, we are on track to make the move next month. It's very exciting. <laughs> so for those of you who may or may not know, we are moving uh, to the Penquist building just down the street um, on Harlow. And um, the last kind of piece to that that we've been waiting is the fiber, which is expected to be installed here shortly. Um, and so we're working out a timeline to actually move our staff down there over the next month or so. Um, with an expected opening date um, and the pink was building of Monday, December 18th. That's what we're shooting for. We are about to send out all sorts of um, notices through a press release, uh, social media. There will be big message boards uh, posted here and also down there to alert people that parking is actually going to be down behind the building um, and things of that nature. Um, and then the last piece of it too is in order to um, to properly move clerk and treasury, which are the most kind of forward facing customer service folks that we have in the building, we're gonna need to close the building to the public on Friday, December 15th. And that will allow us to move all of their equipment um, and then be ready to go for Monday the 18th. So um, yeah, that's my, that's my update. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and I do expect that I'll have a little more detail on Monday to share as well. Questions in the move? Chancellor Leonard. And to just a personal inquiry, do I have to state every single time that I have a bias when I walk into the building? Uh, actually, you can't go in now that you're wearing a You don't, not every time. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'll yeah. just that, I guess. <laughs> so that's, that's it tonight? Yeah. Okay, the motion to adjourn? Our objection. We are adjourning. And signing out. PED is next. Economic yeah, development is, is next. <laughs> we should check my. Ah, yeah. 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 Y